Good mid morning. It is a Thursday. Hope you're having a good day. I am. Uh, I'm going to be gone next couple of days. Actually, a couple. I'm going to be in and out, but I'm going to have to do these remotely, which is not ideal. Um, but I, I think I can get away with it. I'll have to use a laptop. The format won't be as good, but we'll do. There'll be quicker versions um, just for weather updates and stuff. But uh, so don't. Yeah. So you'll notice a change over after today in quality. But that's because I'm not going to bring lights and I'm not going to, I'm going to use my laptop camera, stuff like that. Okay, so what do we got to talk about? Oh, we've got um, the fog to talk about on the coast. It's going to be in and out the next few days because of the wind. We've got tree pollens, grass pollens, and weed pollens that are all <laughs> trending high. And a lot of it has to do with the breezy conditions and the fact that it's spring but it's also warming up right so it cools down the plants kind of go a little bit inward and then when it heats up like it will today and yesterday pollens so be prepared and really right through friday um fog warmer to cooler so it warms up and then cools down on saturday late into sunday so like that roller coaster, and it's a weekend roller coaster, right? It's peaking in the middle of the week, which is not the time you want the warm, perfect spring days in, on Wednesday when you're at work. And then they, they cool down on the weekends, or it has been that way to some extent. It's still going to be a nice weekend. It's just not going to be maybe what you picture for May 15th, especially as you get into Sunday, and especially in Lake Tahoe and the west slope of the Sierra Nevada um, so the weekend cooler. Uh, today's temperatures, Redding's going to go 84 degrees, about where they were yesterday. Sacramento, 85. Fresno, 86. Tree pollens, man. Fresno. Wow. Right? Oh, my God. The, the allergies in the Central Valley. Santa Barbara, 63 today. L.A., Los Angeles. I heard it was okay to call it L.A. now, which is awesome. I guess it's always been okay. Um LA 71 and then San Francisco 66. So I brought this picture up because I want you to see how beautiful the Marin County coastline is, Marin Headlands. But I also see the fog. It, this is, and this is, um, that's Pacifica down there in Montero Mountain. But this is fractured fog. It's when the wind comes up, the fog gets kind of torn up. And that makes sense because an inversion is an inversion. It's cold air. Um, uh, under uh, warm air on top of cold air. Cold air can't really rise very easily. So when you mix up that lower layer, you kind of mess up the inversion. The inversion still tries to exist, but it's, it's hard. So with the no inversion, without that compression and that cold air being just compacted down against the sea, the ocean, uh, it, it, it has a difficult time forming. And so this morning is a pretty good example of that. This is, um, let's see if I can pull this up. This is, let's do six hours. This is the fog this morning. And you're looking down. I'll see if it reloads. Yeah. So you see it's a little deeper, a little deeper. Then it comes back more aggressively in the morning when the winds are light this morning. And then as the winds pick up this afternoon, closer to 9, 10 a.m., it clears out. So that's an example of the inversion being busted. Um, so... That's how it's going to go the next few days. So breezy conditions lean into allergies for sure, but it also leans into fog having a difficult time staying intact. Uh, there is a gale warning along the coast. That gale warning in small craft advisory in the bay will probably be have, be up in some form or another for the next week or so certainly a small craft advisory as we get into springy kind of windy breezy conditions and that's you know how they're always like oh spring is a breezy time you know kite flying and all that it makes sense right because you're transitioning and the jet stream is going further north or going further north it's receding right um and because the days are getting longer the jet stream it represents the difference between the warm and the cold air if you can believe that, right? If you can, we've talked about it a lot. So as the days get longer and the sun moves up to the Tropic of Cancer, yeah, um, 23 and a half degrees north, it creates the uh, warmer air down here. So the jet stream kind of retracts up into the polar regions. And so when that happens, as it's retracting, it, 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 it continues to deliver weak pulses just to the north of the Bay Area. In other words, we're right on that line. It's a little further, a few, lati few degrees of latitude north. And so those upper level disturbances that go by to the north that don't really impact us, 
do have an impact on the pressure gradient. And that pressure gradient releases and then increases, releases and increases. When it increases, it's windy. I'll show that in the computer model. It'll make more sense, I hope. Uh, so, and that's why spring is a windy time of year. This is the fog being chewed away. There's a visible satellite and you can clearly see it, right? And that's, this is right where we just were. And Monterey Bay, you're gonna clear today. You can see it didn't clear well yet. It did clear yesterday in Santa Cruz. But um, I actually went surfing down there yesterday. It was kind of fun, kind of higher tide steamer lane, but I was like, I'm stoked to be in the water. Um, but uh, that'll go away today. This whole coastline is going to probably clear. And you can already see it down south, down towards Big Sur clearing out as well, and down towards Santa Barbara. So breezy conditions will do this for basically the entire coastline. The small craft advisory inside the bay, that's this lighter color, right? inside Monterey Bay too. And then outside, further offshore, those are gale warnings. So that's, you know, that's breezy. It's up over 35 miles an hour in many, in many instances. And that's enough. You know, if you're out fishing or if you want to, you're trying to have a nice day out, uh, I don't know what we're fishing for these days. Um, I should know. But yeah, whatever you're doing out in the ocean, it's not fun when it's windy. So yeah, I would limit my activities to next week in the, in the ocean. These are the forecast highs for today. Uh, 85 in Sacramento, 66 in San Francisco, 79 in Petaluma, or Santa Rosa, pardon me, 85 in Bakersfield, 68 in um, Southern down towards Imperial City in San Diego. And uh, this is the map showing again, it's kind of reiterating my point about the winds. And you can kind of see, look at this. Uh, this, is, this is a weather system. And this is the jet stream further to the north. And I can't, I can't go further north than this, but you can see that that's a, jet, a weather system tweaking by and it's creating a pressure gradient. And that pressure gradient is here. So the closer that jet stream is to us and the more pulses that go through it, the more opportunity for wind. Then now, now <laughs> I know I'm belaboring the point, but I, once you get it, you get it. You go, ah, that's why spring is spring. Because I'll back it up. We're not going to get too granular. I, I realized this model I looked at the other day, 500 millibar vorticity GFS. I love it, number one, because look how awesome that looks. Like that's, that's the circle around us. That's the world, man. It's the planet breathing. And that's how we breathe. How awesome. So this is just going through time. But that, like, so for instance, we look at that, we go, when is that? May 30th. May, yeah, Friday morning, May 30th. That's interesting, right? So you're going to hear all sorts of stuff about that if that occurs, because it's an inside slider that retrogrades and goes offshore and they scoops up some moisture. That would be a major event for um, Southern California, um, Santa Barbara, and those areas for thunderstorms. But beyond that, what I want you to see is okay, so circle around us, there goes a tweak to the north. This is Saturday morning. Remember I said inside slider? Dry inside slider for the most part, but it will increase the pressure gradient and it will drop temperatures. And then you get a little ridging on Monday. But then look, another one. See how it swoops by the Columbia River? See how close all that is coming? So that's, that's just tweaking the pressure gradients on and off, on and off, on and off. And so as long as that's happening, it looks like almost every day we get something sliding by to the north you're going to have the pressure gradient tightening, just trying to adjust to the low that went by, then the high builds in, then the low builds in, then the high builds in, back and forth. It's like, it's like breathing. So this is the GFS surface model. And really, first thing we'll do is let's go right to this weekend, because I know that's what you're thinking. Here's Saturday morning, okay? Uh, I'm not changing my plans. 540 line's pretty far up there. It's not that cold. Um, and then it moves off. It will be cooler this weekend. So we're not going to see temperatures like we did a few weeks or last weekend down into the 60s on low 70s. We're going to be mostly in the 70s, even on this cool event on Saturday and Sunday. But what I want you to look at are the solid lines and see how close they stay together. So and then watch that see them right off our coast. Now that's that's windy. That's a gale warning for sure. That's Friday afternoon. And then they slack a little, and then they, they pinch down again. And then they slack a little, then they pinch down again. That's the tweaking to the north, okay? So this is, why, do, why am I talking about hay fever and allergies? Because look at this, this, this wind signature as we go through the next 10 days. That's a lot of wind. 
It's a lot. I mean, it, it, it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Not really. It, it means it, if it just removes three degrees to the north, it doesn't happen. There's that system we were just looking at, that weird one. And that drops down. Yeah. Um, but it does represent the, um, the, the, the wind and, the, and the, the, why we're having a small craft advisory. Okay. <sighs> to the birds. I was cruising today. Oh, I'm going to be gone. I think I mentioned that. I'm going to be gone a few days. Um, I'll do this from the road and I will try to make it as clean as possible. I'm making sure they're still there. So I just saw this morning these, the, these birds um, are sunny and shadow, are no, sunny and gizmo, are their wingspan. When they open their wings up, just to give you perspective on these two, their wings are five feet long. So that's almost what I would be throwing out right there, right? About five feet, I don't know if you can see that. So, I mean, so the nest is big. The nest, edge to edge on the nest, I understand, is six feet. They are getting ready to fledge, which is, means they're getting ready to fly any day now. And they may come back to the nest. They may not. But uh, it's, I feel like a, it's, it's really sort of cathartic watching them. I know some of you are like me. We just watch them um, all day. But just the life and how it, how it starts. And we lost one early. And then how, it, how, how they sort of evolve into these, these creatures that are pretty much on their way to being self-sufficient in a matter of a few months. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I'm just wishing them the best. And I'm not too worried about them. I was looking at them last night, and they just seem like they are rare. It's like when you're a teenager. You know, and you got like a three-year-old or a five-year-old or eight-year-old, and they're off in grammar school. You're like, there's no way this kid is ever leaving the house. And then somewhere around 17 and a half, you're like, oh, this guy's got to go. <laughs> teenager so i'm kind of guessing that's kind of where this is at and they not only that the the the, the, the five-year-old feels like he doesn't want to go either he likes you know ice cream and tv and saturday morning cartoons but um when he hits 17 and a half he goes yeah i gotta go you just kind of know you gotta go and i think these guys know they gotta go okay so breezy Fog's going to be kind of in and out. It's, you know what? It's going to be classic spring week ahead. I'm going to be gone for a few days. Actually, I'm going to be all over the map. I've got a bunch of cool things I'm doing. Um, some fishing, a couple weddings, some bike riding. But I'm going to try to stay up on this and just be have a consistent kind of a weather presence for you and for me because I like doing it. Um, and then we will uh, reconvene. You'll know when I'm back because you'll see the graphics will be you know the formatting will be better tell a friend if you can getting some new subscribers which is fun i appreciate all your comments good and bad and you guys never say bad things but feel free to say bad things too just because the bad things i learned in, in television all those years ago like people i just bad things people don't or don't mean bad things you know what i mean like when comments that's a big thing but they they really are just feeling like they have to express themselves and bad things they are not complimentary things unless they're mean mean is kind of weird but generally i get I've, over the thousands of years that i've done television and back in the day it was letters that came in i can count the number of nasty letters i got in 38 years which i'm a tv weatherman i mean uh, it's like the butt of all jokes right i mean and i didn't get any people were absolutely that was my biggest epiphany i was telling i saw dad yesterday uh, 98 years old and doing doing pretty well he's starting to fade a little i'll put a picture in of dad as a matter of fact this is just yesterday but um i told him i go you know what i've learned about life is that and especially in this job especially when i was on tv people are awesome like you think they're bad you watch enough news you think people are bad they're not bad people are awesome people the the bulk of people even the bad ones aren't bad i mean they are some are real bad i mean there's you got your bad bads but i mean think you know it's people who appear bad like i don't know i could go on and on and on but but this job has introduced me into a world of um really interesting people and i have i've just i'm just whenever i see people i go even if they look bad and mean or you're like, oh, they're not bad. And they really aren't people. <laughs> I just kind of went off there. Um, but it was, it really is an awesome 
it's an awesome realization. And I had the benefit of that because I had access to all you guys for all those years back before there were a lot of media uh, things. And so we were kind of like, well, you know, you, you didn't have all these influencers. So you only had your TV people, your movie people, and your, your athletes that were kind of, you know, some celebrity. And so I heard from you guys. And what I heard was, you know, really nice things, really complimentary things, and occasionally things that were not pleasant, but were also actually irrelevant like I, got, I learned from that and I go oh yeah maybe that is right maybe I, should, I talk too much about surfing or maybe right and that's and because you're in tv you're kind of trying to reach a broad edge. okay ah um that was like some therapy right there all right so uh you have a great day I'll see you back here I'll be on the road again the next week or two so that's gonna be awesome um I will see you somewhere uh coming up uh, like subscribe comment right do all that stuff see you back here